Welcome back to Custom Night Vision, the only source for bespoke night vision solutions. In today's video, we're going to be discussing IR lasers and zeroing them on your weapon systems. There are a lot of things to consider as there are many variables within a system and many different uses for these systems. We must evaluate these aspects as they relate to our needs or your needs, the end user, so that you can make the best decision on what concept works best for you. First and foremost, we're gonna talk about parallel versus converging zero uh, and what those are. We're gonna go through that in detail um, towards the end of the video. We're gonna discuss the zero distance for your optic and laser and how they relate to one another. Some of the points we feel should be considered when trying to decide how you want to zero your IR aiming device uh, are whether or not you wanna do a, a parallel or converging zero the zero distance of your optic and your laser. What laser you're using will obviously dictate you know, what kind of zero you can use, whether or not you have a vis laser or your visible laser and IR laser slaved together. Uh, some laser aiming systems do not have an IR laser and visible laser slaved together, and some don't have a visible laser at all. So this creates some problems with how you can actually zero it or the, the methods you have to use to get that laser zeroed. Uh, another consideration is what gun or what firearm are you putting this laser on? That's going to, to dictate kind of what your laser um, zero needs to look like. Where is the laser mounted on the gun? Is it on the top of the rail? Is it on the side? Is it on the bottom? Do you have it on like one of those Hydra mounts? These are all going to affect your point of aim, point of impact when you do find an aiming solution for that laser. Furthermore, what is your philosophy of use with this weapon system? Are you in law enforcement? Are you in the military? Do you plan on making hostage rescue shots that have zero margin for error? Or are you just out mag dumping into trash and shooting steel plates? These things should all be a factor in how serious you take this and what aiming solution you ultimately choose. Finally, ballistic performance of the firearm will also dictate how you zero both your optic and your laser. Something to consider is, and we'll go over this more so later on in the video, when utilizing a converging zero, you're inadvertently introducing an additional variable into what I would consider like a traditional elevation hold, as most IR aiming lasers are offset, even though just slightly, when that zero converges at some point, 50, 100 meters, whatever you choose is right for your weapon system, there's always going to be an offset to one side. And once you pass, pass that, that point of convergence, then there's going to be an offset to the other side. So not only are you dealing with the typical bullet drop change in elevation over distance with any firearm, now you're having to account for a zero shift left to right because the convergence of your aiming laser is actually intersecting your point of aim or point of impact and then continuing on past it. I drew some diagrams, we'll go over that in a little bit more detail in a minute. Before we get into the mechanics of actually zeroing this laser on your weapon system, I want to talk about making a realistic evaluation of the visibility under night vision. Um, what is the max effective distance or the maximum distance that you can safely identify a target and get positive identification of that target? Uh, I've used night vision extensively and I know where the limitations are for me and my eyes with my night vision system. This is going to play a part in where you really want to zero that IR laser. Um, if you talk to somebody that wants to do, is advocating for a hundred meter or further distance with an IR laser, I, I don't really think that even with the best night vision, you could positively identify, at least in a domestic application, a target that I would comfortably want to send rounds at. So yes, at 100, 200 yards, you can see that there is a person, but there's no way to know if that person is a threat, if that's the perpetrator I'm looking for, Use that in your consideration of where you actually want to zero this laser. To illustrate the difference between a parallel and converging zero, I did some pretty terrible diagrams here, but I think it'll get the job done. Um, this is an, uh, an example of a 50 meter converging zero. 
So this black box with the two uh, diodes coming out of it is a, a laser. You know, call it a D-ball or a PEC-15 or whatever, they all kind of look the same. But for instance, this red line is going to be the path of the projectile. And this green line is going to be the laser and where it falls on the target. So if we zero, we do a converging zero at 50 meters, the bullet, your projectile is going to hit point of aim, point of impact. The laser is also going to land on the target in the same point. Below 50 meters, 25 meters, you're gonna have a vertical and slightly right offset of your laser aiming point in relation to where your bullet impact is happening. Conversely, at 75 meters, these are rough, no, this is not anything substantiated by actual ballistic data, so just play along. At 75 meters, the laser is going to pass the point of convergence, cross over the point of aim, and land somewhere low left on the target while still main maintaining point of aim, point of impact with your projectile. So this kind of gives you an example of the shortcomings of this aiming solution or this zeroing solution. However, this is the fastest and easiest way to zero an IR laser. Whenever I put a new laser on the gun, I always, at a minimum, set it up with a converging zero, whatever zero distance my optic is set up for. For example, like a T2 zero at 50 meters, I can walk outside my house, put my dot on a brick wall that's about 50 meters away and manually adjust my visible or IR laser until it's sitting directly over the top of my red dot. It's a very easy, it's an effective zero because the offsets at practical engagement distance are not that crazy. However, like I said earlier, it all depends on your philosophy of use with this weapon system. If you're in law enforcement or you're in the military and you're going to be accountable for every shot that you send down range, this may not be the best solution for you. Moving on. This is kind of a loose example of, um, a rough example of a parallel zero and, and kind of what that looks like in the real world. Again, terrible laser drawing, path of projectile, center of the target, path of laser, always a little bit high right because that's essentially the offset of the laser in relation to the center line of the bore. On the target, you would see something like this. 25 meters, your impact's gonna be a little bit high. 50 meters, dead center, 100 meters, a little low, 150, lower than that, 200, a little lower than that. However, lasers travel in straight lines. As you can see with this diagram here, bullets do not. With respect to uh, taking the ballistics in, into account, essentially you would hold the same point, you know, 50 meters, 25, you're all gonna be in an acceptable window. Uh, it would be incumbent on you to determine the ballistic performance of your particular weapon system and come up with a, a mental dope chart, if you will, of where you need to hold your laser at different ranges. I'd like to give a more concise representation of, of, of what I'm trying to explain as it pertains to ballistic performance in relation to laser aiming solutions. So. This is not an accurate diagram by any means. I'm showing 50 meters to the target here. This is the muzzle, this is the laser. Lasers travel in straight lines to infinity, okay? Bullets do not. However, you know, this distance, um, depending on the caliber, you're not gonna get really a whole lot of climb and impact. Most calibers are gonna be firing mostly in a straight line to the target. Um, Something to consider is your optic, optic offset also. If you have a really tall mount, that, that can come into play and have some adverse effects on your aiming solution. But just for representation, let's change this to 200 meters. We're going to get rid of these lines. So let's call this 50 meters here. Here's your target stand. We know that this laser is zeroed at 50 meters. Boom, right there. 
the rifle or pistol or cannon or whatever is also zeroed at 50 meters. Excuse my squiggly lines. Now, if we want to make impacts out here at 200 meters, the laser, as we discussed, is going to travel in a straight line to infinity. Let's say we're holding at the same point on this target, right there. Bullets do not travel in straight lines. For the purposes of this diagram, the bullet is gonna travel higher than the axis of the laser or the path of the laser and then it's going to fall somewhere on this target. Now this being said, this may not end up at the same place. We know that some rifles of 50 to 200 zero is pretty accurate, but let's say it's not. Let's say it ends up down here somewhere. You would need to know at given distances what this drop is just like you do with any other optic and kind of memorize that. If you want to make long dis distance shots with an IR laser only, just like your red dot, just like your one to six or whatever you're using, you're going to have to know what your hold is. So it, consider that when you're coming up with a zero for your laser as well. Um, some zero distances are better. They require less offset over extended different distances. A uh, good example is like the 36 meter zero for a red dot. I mean, these, it's all gonna depend on, I don't wanna get too far into the weeds, but muzzle velocity, bullet weight, I mean, these all play a big, they're big components in, you know, figuring out what's gonna work best for you. Uh, suffice to say, there are targets out there that make this very easy. These are very popular, the Tuluric, Turler, Tur whatever, however you say it, these targets. You can order them for different, different lasers. Um, you know, whatever IR laser device you're using, they have one um, designed for it. And basically they use a piece of glint tape here in the middle. When your IR laser goes over this, hits it at distance, it really lights up so you know you're on target. And then it gives you, you know, where your impacts are supposed to be on that target with, with really clear instructions also. Another great one, uh, Kinetic Consulting has, I think, an even better target solution on his website. You can print these, these are free. These ones are not free. Uh, John did a really good job making this. He's got circles in here for IR and vis laser, and then a point of aim with very detailed instructions on how to get a really good zero on your laser. We can give a, a loose example of what a parallel zero would look like if you wanted to do that on your rifle. So I know that this red dot is zeroed at 50 meters. I've uh, confirmed it. We're at like 10 meters. I'm gonna put three or four shots on the target with the vis laser on and see where it kind of lands on paper. And then I'm going to confirm that it, it just matches the offset, the laser emitter to the, the bore. And I'll show you how we do that. So. Okay. I'm gonna hold dead center on the target. The round should fall three, three and a half inches low. So I'm gonna turn my vis laser on. I'm gonna hold center. And my vis laser is a little low. So weapon is on safe. To adjust the position of the laser, there are knobs or little, little screws is what they look like, typically flathead. Some of them take an Allen key or a brass um, and they're annotated left, right, up, down. So if I wanna bring the laser up, go up here on the top, I can see there's a dial that says U, D with arrows. I wanna bring it up, I'm gonna turn it towards the up. A few clicks or down, same amount of clicks. And then if I'm off left to right, I can do the same thing on the side 
essentially turret. It's just inset into the laser. You can click that. Each laser is gonna have a different measurement per click. Uh, some of them are half MOA, some of them are a full MOA. Um, I'm actually not sure what the measurements are on the Ingall, but I would have to assume it's probably a half. Um, yeah, but essentially, this is what it would look like. This is how we recommend you do it. Find a range that's 25, 50, 100 meters, whatever you decide works for you. Put a couple shots on a target of your choice, and then this is how you adjust the laser, come back and confirm. Once you've evaluated all the different considerations we've gone over today, input your own data as it pertains to your equipment and made a decision on a zeroing solution for your equipment, be consistent with it. If you have multiple guns, try to get them on the same program and go out and train with it. Uh, push your limitations with that solution, with that equipment to really find out where your shortcomings are and then work on them. If you are new to night vision and you're just getting into night shooting, I highly recommend you go take a, a class with a reputable instructor. John, Kinetic Consulting, he does a really good job with the intro and intermediate night vision classes. Uh, Jamie Caldwell with One Minute Out. If you want a six hour explanation of how this works and the different applications of zeroing, zero targets, and the, the uses, for those, sign up for one of his classes. He does one of the most in-depth explanations of the different variables and zeroing our aiming devices. Check out the targets I mentioned or make your own. There's lots of different ways to skin this cat. So get out there, go train, go you know, schedule a class with some of those guys who are recommended. We appreciate your time. Get down in the comments and tell us what you think. You know, if you've got something that I didn't mention that works really well for you, I'd love to hear about it. And as always, like, share, and subscribe. Thanks.